Sure. Thanks for having me. All right, have a seat. Sure. Uh, this one was ordered by my mom. Oh, that's it. It was way too much. Uh, she said, tried to do things. Hello everybody, welcome to MNB World Talk Show. Why the voices of women need to be raised and heard in today's society? Well, our guest of today is someone who has answers to the question. She's a passionate activist who fights for human rights and gender equality. She's co-founder and director at Women for Change NGO, Ms. Zolzaya Batoyk. Thank you. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me here and giving us the, this platform and like to uh, send our voices not only in local, not only in uh, mm -hmm. Mongolia and like over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have been working, dedicating yourself, I'd mm -hmm. say, in the civil society for, for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you have also law background. Mm -hmm. When was the turning point to fight for human rights and gender equality? Mm -hmm. Because this career, this field doesn't pay much, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it doesn't offer you stable job uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so especially in Mongolia, civil society is one of the sector which can't uh, pay for the uh, staff, like good salary or who are working for the, for the justice or human rights are like financially not, as you say, it's stable. Mm -hmm. But I think the compensation that we are working, compensation we are having, it's our value. And like we are driven by our value and like beliefs, mm -hmm. which we believe uh, justice should be, everybody should have own, their own rights and the, their rights should be implemented equally and everybody should have their choices to be made and it, it should be uh, protected by the law or like every other regulations. So mm -hmm. for, for now, uh, we can see that in many countries and, and especially in Mongolia too, women's rights and, and other minority rights are not really uh, implemented well and protected well. Mm -hmm. So not only women, as I say, the w people with disability or ethnic minority yes. and maybe sexual minority too. So uh, the working in civil society, 10 years, it, it feels very fast. <laughs> I can't believe it's <laughs> already 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, uh -huh. what yeah, was, when what was, was the, the turning point? Yeah. Why did you go into this yeah. field? 2008, and especially July 1st, and after election, parliamentary mm. election happened in um, 31st of the June on that mm -hmm. year, and the people was... Uh, did not agree with the election result. So they gathered in Main Square and they came to one of the parties building, in front of the parties building. And my uh, work was uh, just next to that building, which means like uh -huh. I was working in the Ulaanbaatar Hotel. <laughs> So, so you were right inside yeah, of Lambert Hotel yeah, by the time. Yeah, so it's like I think biggest riot happened and after the democratic revolution of the it Mongolia. Was. Yeah, so for me it was a very kind of different feeling I never seen. When I, democratic revolution, I was a little child. I didn't really feel, felt about what, what happened. And so I witnessed the July 1st. So that time I was like, uh, participating as a volunteer for the Human Rights Coalition. Mm -hmm. So I got chance to go for human rights monitoring mm -hmm. who arrested because of the, that demonstration. Yes. So I learned about, as a lawyer, I had background about human rights, but I really felt that moment, okay, I should work and I should use my uh, like lawyer, no, lawyer's knowledge and everything that for human rights because I have knowledge and I graduated but I was working in marketing mm -hmm. so that thing really that uh, the incident the July 1st really uh, gave me that turning point moment uh, mm -hmm. and after that uh, from September uh, July to September I was uh, actively participating as a volunteer and from mm -hmm. September I worked uh, in Monfemnet, one of the biggest mm -hmm. uh, national network of NGOs in Mongolia mm -hmm. and I started working in 
civil society and still. Mm -hmm. So you <laughs> yeah. quit your job yeah. right after the riot? Yeah. yeah. Wow, so, so that yeah. was really a turning point. Yeah. Well, uh, let us show mm -hmm. to our mm -hmm. viewers mm -hmm. a very official and very short mm, introduction okay. of you. Okay. Well, let's watch some uh, background, educational and uh, professional background of her. most interesting was to me that I didn't see any family photo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your take on marriage? Mm -hmm. My question is, do you think the marriage is something that can be planned or is it just a matter of finding the mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. as people say? Yeah, as a human rights activist, mm -hmm. I believe in more in love. Marriage is like more, I don't know, registration thing when you or when you uh, talk about maybe divorce, you need uh, the s split your like belongings and more <laughs> like yes, that. Yes, but yes. it's okay, mm -hmm. it's okay. But uh, uh, I really respect the marriage and the family and other thi uh, mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we see in Mongolia very traditional way, very narrow angle. From we see mm -hmm. like from uh, the kindergarten, we can see that like when they teachers or kindergarten, every Father's Day, Mother's Day, they uh, ask to children to send, like write message or poets, yes. poems for their fathers and mothers. So that means like we, our society see a family as a perfect family, mother and mother, uh, father and the children. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's different. There are different kind of various kind of families. It's mm -hmm. very diverse. So. And other, uh, for example, single mothers with uh, with her children, or single fathers we have, or some children live with their grandparents, mm -hmm. or I don't know, some people in uh, their sisters, or sometimes maybe mm -hmm. like uh, so even you are in or orphan or in house. So mm -hmm. in that case, they are feeling excluded because of society. Mm -hmm. See, only this one is like mother, father, children, it's the family. So in that kind of uh, traditional way of seeing the marriage or family, sometimes excluding diverse or in, it's not inclusive for everyone. Mm -hmm. So most, mostly there, uh, I see many cases like when they were a child, they living with single, uh, their mother mm -hmm. and they were happy. But when they're like classmates or teachers talking about like saying, or oh, you are not uh, like fully, your life is not fully, uh, fully happy because mm -hmm. you you don't have daddy or like you don't have mommy. So that uh, I believe family or marriage is like the who this is this is the thing when they people choose to have like choose to be in by their ways by their own beliefs mm -hmm. and by their own life uh, love. Mm -hmm. So I think it doesn't really have the stereotype or like uh -huh. the settings we so should follow? So you are saying we are not really being sensitive enough about these family issues and status quo? Yeah, yeah. Now it's mm -hmm. family is very diverse. So we yes, should yes, understand that diversity. Totally that. But uh, like we can see, especially like, for example, in our friends, we have different kind of family kind of uh, types. But mm -hmm. still, the education system, mm -hmm. they teach you like kind of ideal <laughs> thing, mm -hmm. they think ideal, uh, the family members or family mm -hmm. settings, and everybody uh, asking or the pushing everybody being like that, but mm -hmm. in reality it's very different. So it's, for example, especially the minorities are mm -hmm. really kind of excluding from that kind of things. So we should, sure. uh, we should upgrade or we should transform the understanding of family or understanding of marriage, mm -hmm. even understanding of the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, for us, uh, we what we really matter. What the, what is really matter for a relationship or things? We we asking okay if they have a really like serious relationship. Uh, do they that people who are participating? Mm -hmm. Do they uh, adult? They uh, like um, 
on like above uh, 18 years mm -hmm. old. I like, do they do voluntarily? Is mm -hmm. there any violence or not? If not, it's mm -hmm. their issue. It's not our problem to say you're mm -hmm. right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. or something. Okay. Uh -huh. When you meet the one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have. Okay. <laughs> when you meet the one, uh -huh. will you consider all of these aspects? Yeah, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's for me... Uh, what I feel and what that person feels is important, not really the society thing, it's not important, I think. Mm -hmm. In 2017, mm -hmm. you worked on a project that's mm -hmm. called Beautiful Body. Mm -hmm. It is a photo exhibition, right? And with it, you successfully participated in Nord Art, art International Art mm -hmm. Exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my so question is, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. would you mm -hmm. have been brave enough Mm -hmm. to get naked. Well, these photos were mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. naked women, mm -hmm. women's body. Mm -hmm. Would you have been brave to get naked in front of the camera if you had to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, the first uh, Beautiful Body Exhibitions participant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the uh, photo... Uh, models? Uh, yeah, photo models. And, like, you were one of them? Yeah, yeah. And but the first, first one. one. Yeah, ah. first one. And the idea of the Beautiful Body is like, Everybody is beautiful by their mm -hmm. own. It doesn't really matter shape or sizes or like mm -hmm. age. And but society is especially cosmetic industry, media industry, marketers, they say like you are not beautiful until you use this this and yes. that or eat yes. or like wear this one or mm -hmm. like you will have this cart, you will be a real man or you will have <laughs> this car yeah. or like mm -hmm. uh, mobile phone. And like especially young people young women are really influenced by that media mm -hmm. sometimes we can say manipulation like they manipulating to sell something to us and they saying you are not enough beautiful you are not enough uh, unique by yourself mm -hmm. and so we decided and uh, that kind of discussion is goes everywhere but mm -hmm. no one really s uh, sees the different kind of bodies so we decided okay we will mm -hmm. show different kind of bodies and naked and half naked and mm -hmm. people can see what what is the like beautiful body in, mm -hmm. because we are just uh, just talking wasn't enough uh -huh. so we decided we call uh, like gather it around 30 different women different age different body and like mm -hmm. different kind of shapes sizes and we we are talking about body image we organized mm -hmm. body image workshop and together we learned many research like many research about how media influence in cosmetic industries marketers mm -hmm. and after that research and discussions everybody the everybody's self esteem is raised back because uh, if uh, if I will ask someone right now, okay, you have naked photo, nobody will say yes. <laughs> it will uh -huh. be difficult until they are not, uh, unless they are not photo models, uh, professional yes, yes. photo models. So the, that discussion, like meaningful discussion, really uh, helped us to uh, being proud of my mm -hmm. body and mm -hmm. being uh, owner of my body and being really uh, meaningfully love our body. So I was... Uh, brave enough to participate, that, ki that kind of discussion really motivated me to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, uh, and uh, we were so happy that uh, two times in Mongolia we organized, then like a third times the Nord Art we selected as a one of the uh, 200 artists from around the world mm -hmm. and to show our exhibition in Germany. Uh -huh. And like every wow. year in exhibition, 100,000 European, uh, mostly European visitors come. Mm -hmm. And there was, when we were there, that was really great quest, uh, discussion to have visitors. And they say it's not only the problem in Mongolia, even in Germany, around yeah, the around the world, women have very low self-esteem and they have uh, body dissatisfaction because mm -hmm. of the like influence and like many research shows mm -hmm. that if we will see more body positive photos, mm -hmm. our self uh, esteem and our self love will uh, increase back. Will increase yeah. Back. Mm -hmm. Why did you start Women for Change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the first place, we were just uh, 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 try to create the space, uh, the safe space to okay. talk to each other. Like, what is the really problem? What is the challenge for us? Is there any uh, solutions, opportunities we can change? So mm -hmm. we didn't uh, imagine it will be like the organization which, which now have like 100 members and many partners and like many supporters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just started brief discussions and small mm -hmm. discussions to try to understand what is the really our society 
asking for us like what we can change for that yeah well okay mm -hmm. uh, let us show you what they really do at women for change ngo office so women for change uh, we uh, organize and implement different kind of projects and program this office is uh, including six different NGOs working for the social uh, better better social uh, changes so here is our values we believe and we believe in human rights and equality and we believe in different kind of values for which the, the society needs for now and uh, here are different organizations working for environment, working for voting rights and working for women's political leadership and uh, civic participation. Well, it seems mm -hmm. that uh, Women for Change NGO organizes many leadership trainings mm -hmm. and programs. Mm -hmm. So do the other NGOs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait, yeah, oh, okay. hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Does mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. has to be leaders in order to make change in the world. What is your take on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see leader is a like everybody can be leader in their own way. So it's okay. like leader doesn't really mean like very well known person or like very popular one or like uh, leader doesn't need to be do national thing or things like that. Mm -hmm. Leader can be in their community, in their company, in their uh, like organization. Mm -hmm. They can be leaders. So we started the movement like from our NGO, like Voices for Change. So mm -hmm. we believe maybe like 20 or 30 years, Mongolia, especially the civil society worked for human rights and gender equality. Mm -hmm. And now sometimes people have some ex uh, that kind of expectation when they're like rape case or when they're gender based violence mm -hmm. case, worst cases, harmful things. People uh, are like expecting to uh, the civil society do something or like or mm -hmm. only female parliament members but mm -hmm. when we see the like how really change comes everybody or like majority of the society should think or should fight against that kind of uh, mm -hmm. unjust things mm -hmm. so uh, so voices for change the idea like everybody can make change so you are inviting here us and giving this space you are changing you are mm -hmm. uh, using your platform you are using mm -hmm. your voice and like uh, to contributing for the social change. Mm -hmm. So in like the TV host or like mm -hmm. even the dancer can dance that kind of dance or mm -hmm. like even business person can create the envi uh, like friendly environment for everyone or like inclusive office, inclusive business or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, everybody can do, everybody can contribute in this social um, positive change. Mm -hmm. So we uh, think that everybody can be voices for change. So as a leader, we doesn't really mean like just uh -huh. political so the leaders. Of leader for women for change is mm -hmm. different. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. more value. Value is more important. If you have to, mm -hmm. if you have value to change the society in better way, that's the you are leading. You are leading. Your value is leading your community. Uh -huh. Yeah. Value led yeah. Mm -hmm. leadership. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You led. Mm -hmm the project mm -hmm. named Vagina Monologue mm -hmm. and introduced this whole new idea into Mongolia, to Mongolian audience, let's say, in 2011. Mm -hmm. What is, mm -hmm. well, tell our audience, <laughs> tell us mm -hmm. about Vagina Monologues. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh -huh. it's really interesting project and uh -huh. a kind of extreme, one of the extreme. Yeah, the name is extreme. Movement, kind of, yeah, name. And like uh, it's uh, it has many challenges. <laughs> just saying the word yes. vagina, like, uh, <laughs> and uh, we have like from this stage, especially in Mongolia, we have that kind of mentality or stereotype. Or from this stage, you can't say. Yes, <laughs> I'm. I'm it. afraid. <laughs> I, you know, if we translate vagina into yeah. Mongolian and to say it yeah. on a screen, yeah. it would be. Um, very taboo. Yeah, yeah. Act. So uh, from the that word, like then we discussed why we need to be uh, sh uh, like afraid or shy to say or to say that word. Because mm -hmm. We can say a heart or we can say head, we can say arms, but why we 
feeling shame to say vagina. We came, we all all came through the vagina, and why yes. we need to be <laughs> feeling shy? And like, we feel, shy. yeah, and we thought we should be proud and like having the vagina. So uh, having okay. and like coming from vagina, yeah, yes, yes. yeah and uh -huh. like. It's like, as you said, stereotype, especially uh -huh. the social taboo. And um, uh, the um, play is about like, if vagina says, if vagina talks, what she want to talk, what she want to say to people. Mm -hmm. And like different experiences, woman who raped or like woman who, who became the uh, violence, uh, victim of the violence against woman or like domestic mm -hmm. violence or like woman just, uh, and couldn't have baby baby in in her uh, like older age, and she talks mm -hmm. and so uh, vagina monologue. It's maybe in uh, just first place if people dis that dis people don't have knowledge, they think maybe it must be like sexual thing, erotic thing. But when you go there, it's really meaningful thing. And like uh, in our in first year, we organized three times in like around one thousand people, and. Uh, all of them, I can say, majority of them were happy and they were like really kind of reflected positively because we always organized uh, after like after dinner or after mm -hmm. kind of networking event. Vagina monologue, the, mm, you can't just go home after watching Vagina monologue. How many percent yeah. were men? Uh -huh. It's audience, almost like 50, 50 percentage. 50, 50. Yeah, and men were well, like uh -huh. really uh, reacting positively. Mm -hmm. So because it's talking about the real thing, it's talking about your sister, your uh, mm -hmm. your wife or your mother or your mm -hmm. daughter. So it's really close. And we never uh, talk that kind of important thing to each other. So uh, and we successfully organized three years and we raised around 20, uh, 20,000 US dollar and look, we g gave us a donation to Shelter House of Na National Center Against Violence, and mm -hmm. we sent the, some donation to We Day campaign, global campaign, oh. which they collecting, uh, collected and sent to women in Haiti. Haiti, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this was our very first project, and the, from the uh, of the Women for Change, and it it was uh, quite crazy or extreme and we say like after that nothing is crazy mm -hmm. for us <laughs> well <laughs> yes, i mean I, you broke the door yeah, the yeah, so, you didn't yeah. knock you just yeah, broke so the after door. that like <laughs> yes, yes you said after that there isn't like photo exhibition naked yeah, photo yeah, exhibition everything. my shirt skirt march and everything so we really um, like to use art as a as a med medium or to or as a channel to mm -hmm. connect with people because we have facts and numbers we have a lot of workshop trainings mm -hmm. mostly it goes to your like we say brain but when we use art it goes to your heart what is the line mm -hmm. between work and your hobby mm -hmm. i mean art can mm -hmm. be work and at the same time hobby right so mm -hmm. do you distinguish work and your own hobby Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the heart. Yeah, like someone like recently asked, "What is your hobby?" And like, oh, maybe I'm doing my work is my hobby. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm enjoying in it, like, and uh, um, comparing with other some works like you do every day, uh -huh. uh, same things. That in working in civil society, you can be an, anyone. You can be the actress of the vagina monologue. You can uh -huh. be photo model. You can be sometimes cleaning <laughs> your office and you <laughs> trainer or like. Uh -huh. You can be anyone. That really mm. gives me a lot of like mm, inspiration, a mm. lot of motivation, energy, mm. and because uh, we can do uh, like anything, everything by our our own in in our own community, mm -hmm. and like you, we initiate like sometimes crazy projects, and no one say, will say, "Oh, you can't do that." We will like do that. That's uh -huh. the freedom, and that's the, I think my hobby. Yeah. And as an artist, uh, we say now as a civil society, and uh, like mm -hmm. as you said, art. We using a lot of art. So in internationally, we name it like activism and art and activism together, artivism. Activism. So, activism, yeah. Okay, Act that's a art. totally new yeah. term for me. Yeah, art and uh, activism. So mm -hmm. together is activism. It's the one of the uh, the way we are using. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. And the, the so your life mm -hmm. and work mm -hmm. and your hobby, they all are mixed. Yeah. 
and yes, matched. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, sometimes difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she has doll collecting. Mm -hmm. One of one of her mm -hmm. hobbies is mm -hmm. doll collection, mm -hmm. right? Let's look at her dolls. We have doll collection uh, from different uh, part of the world. So, for, ex uh, for example, now we have around maybe 40 or uh, 45 different dolls from different countries. And uh, our members and uh, our staff, when we travel some countries, we always bring the female dolls from that countries. We are, our dream is to have the, all the dolls from uh, the all countries in the world. So when uh, it's kind of created by our all members and supporters. Another uh, hobby, it's like when I travel, I really like to see the visit museums, and especially Museum of Human Rights and the Art. So for example, uh, lastly, I, when I was uh, traveling to London, I, ha I got a lucky chance to visit in uh, artist uh, Ai Weiwei's museum exhibition in London, which is like, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, Ai Weiwei kind of activist. Like in my in my opinion, he he used art as activism. So I really fascinated uh, and really um, inspired by his art. So uh, for example, the art of named straight, which was raising the issue of the uh, earthquake in Sichuan state and so how he was like raising that uh, issue by art and like how uh, he brings the attention to that uh, very important issue and that was like big inspiration for us to use art for the activism we do. Wow, art and you said artivism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Artivism, mm -hmm. activism, they are all part and action of civil society. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the biggest challenge of today? Mm. Just one thing, name one thing specifically. Yeah. I think uh, Mongolian society is really kind of in capacity building and uh, knowledge and like gathered knowledge are quite strong and people have voices. Maybe mm -hmm. the challenge is more financial and day okay, by day. Okay, just say, let's yeah. say finance. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you want this challenge to be changed in mm -hmm. close future? Yeah, in many, uh, like, uh, last 20 years, it's mm -hmm. mostly the civil society dependent by the foreign aids, like government mm -hmm. or embassy. Yes. But now we are trying to support and trying to empower people's uh, philanthropy, people's donation to the civil society mm -hmm. and local people's, Mongolians. So that's the kind of the really helping the sustainability of the uh, mm -hmm. civil society because this civil so society organizations working for uh, the better uh, change for the Mongolians, better society for Mongolians. So we should contribute and like maybe we should uh, just uh, be care, uh, be kind of, we should think about more what kind of organizations I will give. Like sometimes people choose like the things more like charity and like mm -hmm. you can see a result tomorrow, you can see a tangible things, but long-term changes, mm -hmm. you can't really count or see. Like we, we train people, train people, it's somehow, some people see just we are talking, talking, yes. but in long-term visionary transformational change goes like that kind of talk and discussion and mm -hmm. by knowledge. Well, thank you very much, and it's been pleasure talking to you, and it's been very interesting aspects. Mm -hmm. And I wish you good luck and good health with all your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I really enjoyed our conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a pleasant talk, and I hope you enjoyed it. This was Ms. Zoltaya Batoyuk, who is co-founder uh, co and uh, director at Women for Change NGO in Mongolia. Goodbye until next week.